What's up, everybody? Emperor John Kill Duty Gaming here, and I've been debating to make this kind of video about Star Wars because I know this is a topic of massive contention between both supporters, haters, and everyone in between. And after replaying both Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order and Star Wars Jedi Survivor, mind you, I played Jedi Survivor five new game plus runs at this point. I can confidently say that whether people want to hear it or not, the two Jedi games, the Jedi series of games by Respawn, have fully introduced us to the concept of the Grey Jedi. Now, before you put up your lightsabers, blasters, and want to hang me for treachery or what you think is treachery, let me explain. Nobody had an issue with the Grey Jedi in Legends. And in Legends, yes, they did exist. Whether you want to believe it or agree with it or not. Hell, a Grey Jedi joins your party in Knights of the Old Republic 1. The, the ex-Jedi that you find on Kashyyyk. Especially when he speaks and if you listen to his dialogue, he talks very much in the vein of what the Grey Jedi speak of. And their teachings and what they believe in through the Force. But that's besides the point. In the first game, you really don't see signs of Cal Kestis showing Grey Jedi tendencies. He's very much in line with wanting to still be a Jedi or a Jedi Knight. And despite Seer knighting him as Jedi Knight, he really wasn't knighted a Jedi Knight because he wasn't knighted by a council member or someone of high standing. It's just Seer did that to motivate him, to boost him, to give him the confidence to feel that he could take the next step in his journey th within the Force and within his own life. He really isn't trained as a traditional Jedi either in the course of that game or what he learns through Jedi Survivor. Now, when we get to Jedi Survivor, Jedi Survivor, from the opening mission, when you take on the Inquisitor that you took on in the very first game on Kashyyyk, when you take on her, Masana Tide, basically, Cal goes into a stance, a state of mind. He doesn't just outright kill her, and he doesn't outright let her live either. He has to contemplate what he's going to do. Usually, a Jedi will let the opponent live, unless you are a Sith Lord. But we know Inquisitors are not Sith Lords. Now... Cal still did not hesitate to take her life. He took her life, but without malice, hatred, or without the idea of peace. Because a Jedi will take a life in the name of peace, where a Darksider will take a life in the name of anger, vengeance, and hatred, and power. Cal was in the middle. He knew he had the power to defeat her. He has the power, but also the peace to not feel good or not feel the overwhelming joy that a Sith or a Darksider would feel of killing. He also does pity them like a Jedi would, but a Jedi would spend so much time trying to bring them back, even if they are so far gone, even in the Age of the Empire, which we're in with these two games. But Cal Kestis throws all that tradition out of the window. And before you say, well, what about, we know Cal's ties to the light, but does he has any ties to the dark side? Yes, this game, Jedi Survivor, Cal battles the dark side. And instead of doing what any Jedi or stereotypical Jedi would do, which would be to ignore the dark side completely and just see it as an overall negative force cal falls under the lines of someone like kyle katarn who's also viewed as a gray jedi kyle katarn will use the dark side and the light in tandem he said it himself in the old jedi knight games he says no ability of the force is neither good nor bad it is the choice of the wielder itself that makes that power good or bad. Now, 
people will say, well, Cal Kestis does use a dark side ability in the first game, Force Freeze. While, yes, we have only seen Force Freeze used by dark side wielders, Cal Kestis uses it as more of a chance to slow the enemy down instead of just outright leaving them frozen to kill them. But I know in a video game's mechanic, we use it to freeze them so we can kill them. You know, but in this game more so, Cal has an ability where he embraces his dark side and uses it as a weapon against the enemy. Basically, he uses it, but he does not fall to the corruption. He still has an anchor. And who is that anchor? Not only his family, which a lot of his family does die in this game. Seer, Master Cordova, he loses Bode. Even though Bode was a traitor, Bode was still his friend. All he has was Grease, Marin, and now the little girl Bo's daughter, Kata. But Marin anchors Cal to the light side, but not fully, because she herself faces the darkness, being a night sister also deals with the darkness. Now, when Cal Kessis in this game embraces the dark side and destroys that Imperial outpost, he comes very close to killing out of anger and rage. But, when we get to the final battle, where he faces Bode, Bode forces Cal to tap into the dark side. Bode does not use any other tactic except to try to get Cal to succumb to his anger by attacking Marin. But Cal himself, though Cal taps into the dark side, it is used to defend those he loves, not for his personal gain nor personal power. And that is one of the key components that makes a great Jedi, basically a great Jedi. Somebody who falls within the lines of both sides of the Force. And we have seen it plenty of times before. I know there's this contention in the fandom that people hate the Great Jedi concept. Well, in a lot of ways, Legends gave birth to the Great Jedi concept, and fans were the ones who fostered the idea of the Great Jedi concept. Because there was a lot of characters. Now, I know a lot of people say, well, what about Ahsoka? Though Ahsoka falls very close, very, very close to being a Great Jedi. She is still within the lines of her values being that of the Jedi, but without the stagnation of what the Council was dealing with throughout the prequel saga. And yes, we're going to leave Mace Windu out of this, because just because Mace Windu knows how to use the dark side, he doesn't use it in the traditional sense. He almost does it like a martial arts ability where he redirects your energy back into yourself to cause damage. That's how he was able to hold his own with Palpatine, basically Mace's form of style called the pod, basically channels the dark side through you and you can redirect it back out. Similar to Avatar The Last Airbender where you can channel lightning through your body. If you're not a lightning wielder, but if you learn that ability from either Zuko or Iroh to throw lightning back through your own body with your own chi and energy, you can do the same with the dark side. Hence the ability known as Tutaminis, which is also a Jedi ability where you can absorb lightning or any projectile-based weaponry and send it back. Even though we know Vader uses it, Vader does use that ability. We've seen him use it in Empire Strikes Back when Han Solo shot at him on Cloud City. We really don't see Vader use it all that much. We see Vader use Force Freeze more than anything, which we have seen him do in the Kenobi show. But Cal Kestis has quickly become one of my favorite Star Wars characters besides Anakin Skywalker, a.k.a. Darth Vader. Why? Because I could see Cal Kestis being what Darth Vader should have been. The enigma between both the light and the dark sides of the Force. Cal Kestis proves through his actions as a character that though, yes, he knows where he comes from, being a Jedi, but through Jedi Survivor, his Jedi values are crushed and destroyed throughout the game, where in the first game, he kind of builds up his values of being a Jedi again. In this game, his values 
are quickly put to the test and then quickly shattered because of what has gone on and the events that transpired. Even the character of Dagangera gives Cal Kestis an insight of what it means to, even when you're a Jedi, flirting close to the dark side, you can still fall to the power of its corruption. And I think what makes a great Jedi a great Jedi is their will. Yes, their will, their heart, their soul, is you can use your anger against your enemy, but you need to know not to lose yourself to the power. Because yes, in any form of media, whether it be science fiction, medieval fiction, anything that deals with an overarming dark force that feels good to use but then corrupts your character to the core, that's basically a lot of what the dark side is. The dark side, no matter who you are, will corrupt you to its core. But there's only so few individuals. And yes, before, I'm going to throw this side note. Whether people want to like it or not, Darth Revan, a.k.a. Jedi Knight Revan, whether he was a Jedi in the Order or not, Revan was a great Jedi. He did things against the will of the Council, but for the betterment of others. And it proves that in his story. If you ever go back and go through Revan's story or play Knights of the Old Republic, you will quickly see that you are technically playing a great Jedi. But it's also up to you if you want to take the full Jedi path or the dark side path or the path in between, which was an interesting mechanic. And it took me years later playing the game again remastered on Switch to realize that, wow, Revan was a great Jedi from the very start. And I know there's people who have their contenders of who's a great Jedi and who's not a great Jedi. But, or you have those that just flat out hate the concept and they will just curse you out and give you shit for doing so. But the idea is still there. I solely believe that Cal Kestis is our slight introduction. And maybe he could be the only character who's a great Jedi. He doesn't care about restoring the order anymore, but he will care for building something greater and protecting people. And regardless of what side of the force he uses, uses the light to protect people, but uses the dark against his enemies. Basically, you've, uh, what's the term, you know, use their own weapons against them or the weapon of the enemy can be used to defeat them. Yes and no, because of course Luke Skywalker proves that the light side will prevail like he did in Return of the Jedi. But in other circumstances, using the dark side is not a bad thing hence proven by Kyle Kestis and who I really think Kyle, uh, Kyle Kestis takes a lot from Kyle Katarn Kyle Kestis in my humble opinion is Star Wars's first canon grade Jedi now you can agree you can disagree let me know in the comments below what do you think how do you feel about my proposition that Kyle Kestis is a great Jedi be sure to like subscribe favorite and I'll see you all in the next video. Take care, everyone.